Why, hello there. It's Dr. Danielle Clark with Onwards with Dr. Danielle on Win Win Women Network. Thank you for visiting. This is a live show. No worries if you're watching the recording. It's still the same good energy and still the same good information. This is episode eight. Time flies when we have fun. Today, we're going to be talking about pregnancy loss and abortion from a high vibing soul perspective. Before we begin, uh, if you're not connected with me yet on social media, I'd love to invite you to my YouTube channel. Uh, it would be great if you subscribed. That way you can always have access to these recordings. My live show is Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Pacific. And if you just go to my website, if you want to attend live, if you go to drdanielleclark.com, and then you'll see a little, uh, a little strip that says onwards, just click that and it says live Friday show. That's where you want to be. What's really great if you have the chance to attend live is we're going to be talking for a half hour and then for another half hour, we have open time. So if you want direct access to me for Q&As or maybe some sort of a mediumship reading or some sort of a psychic reading, I would be there for you. I just want to open up and say thank you. Thank you for showing up today. Uh, the, the topic of pregnancy, loss, and abortion uh, is heavy. And so whatever brought you here, uh, maybe you have personal experience, know that I'm sending you love. Maybe you don't have personal experience and you're really just trying to better understand abortion and pregnancy loss from uh, a deeper perspective, uh, a higher vibing perspective. Kudos to you for leaning into this. I'm going to talk a little bit about my personal experiences with pregnancy loss and abortion. And then I'm going to open up and talk to you a little bit about my beliefs from a spiritual standpoint uh, about maybe why a baby decides not to come into the world at a specific time and why maybe we as a soul living in a human body might decide it's not the best time for them to come in. Uh, and so while I'm gonna give you my personal belief system, I also want you to know that it is grounded with my years of experience as a psychic medium. So I'll be able to share uh, from a, a spiritual teaching standpoint, uh, what I believe to be some concepts that are really important. Uh, so we don't attach so much self-judgment and shame and hurt uh, to these topics. Uh, you know, it's it's my belief as it relates to the shame and as it relates to the stigma or the pushing people in boxes or trying to control decisions. Uh, I think it's all ego. I think it's fear based. And I just encourage you uh, when you hear something that's not sitting right with your heart, when it's not sitting right with your your gut trust that. Uh, we're all souls. We're all innately beautiful. And we are here to have a human experience. Bloopers, blunders, beauties, mysteries, and all of that. So lean in. Uh, maybe you want to have a tea next to you. Maybe you want to have uh, a journal. Uh, perhaps see what, what sparks you. Maybe even some tissues. Uh, again, I'm sending you love and light as we, as we work through this. Let me share my personal experiences with pregnancy loss and abortion in an effort to, one, give you a sense of community. Even if we don't have a similar story, uh, just know I have a story, and hopefully that makes you feel less alone, whatever your story is, um, because it doesn't matter what your story is or what my story is. They're all unique, and they're all beautiful. So at 17, uh, I was with my then boyfriend uh, and I ended up getting pregnant uh, and he was a bit older. He was 24 ish and he had a, a son already. Uh, and I, I didn't know or suspect I was pregnant. I actually ended up going to the doctor because I just, I just would not stop bleeding. And it never connected to me at 17 that maybe I, I'd be pregnant and especially having it show up in the form of a very long period. Uh, I didn't take good care of myself when I was 17. Uh, it was lots of cigarettes. It was lots of coffee. It was lots of Red Bull. 
Uh, and I, I wouldn't say I had a lot of sexual education. Um, I didn't I didn't go to high school. I, I got my GED. I didn't have really involved parents. So getting pregnant was new to me, even though being sexually active and being promiscuous wasn't. Um, so I go to the, the doctor and I'm shocked uh, to find out that I'm, I'm pregnant. Uh, and, you know, that that initial feeling uh, was was more almost of survival. What what am I going to do? My, my, my mom is going to kick me out of the house. I don't have the financial resources. I, I don't even know if I want this thing called motherhood. Uh, and my boyfriend at the time, he was pretty clear. He didn't want another kid. He was, you know, barely making it providing for um, his other kid. Uh, and so. It was a hard, uh, I'm going to say maybe week or two, um, because during uh, me thinking um, I was going to continue with my pregnancy, I, I started experiencing sparkles of hope, right? Considering some names, maybe wondering if this baby would save me, get me out of the trailer park, get me away from my uh, friends and family that weren't serving me. Maybe this is, you know, the catalyst that's going to help me to quit smoking, uh, but I ended up finding out after they did some blood work, um, probably about week two, that it was an ectomic pregnancy. So it, it had no uh, no hope of, of coming to fruition, not in a healthy way. And I have to tell you, I, I was indifferent. I, I wasn't super sad about hearing that, nor was I super glad. I was just like, oh, okay. And I share that with you because I, I think there's this like stigma or association that anytime we're, we're grieving, it needs to be big. Uh, and it wasn't for me, not at 17. Uh, and so, um, you know, I went back and, and they did, you know, what they had to do. And that was pretty much it. Uh, I didn't even consider that pregnancy again, uh, not until later into my 20s and until my 30s. Uh, as I started uh, identifying with the role of human mama here <laughs> on earth. Uh, and I actually think there was a little bit more grieving than what could have been uh, later on, but not at that period. And so I, I share that with love. If you're holding on to something and, and maybe it was kind of sort of light, right? Even though it had some mixed emotions, uh, just honor that. You don't need to feel bad <laughs> about everything. Sometimes things do work out or something, sometimes things are bittersweet and sometimes having a layer of acceptance just shows that you're, you're spiritually linked in. Uh, but today I still, you know, think about that pregnancy, the, the what ifs, the what could have been. Uh, my ex-boyfriend and I are still in contact today. He's a wonderful man. He actually just had another baby himself not too long ago. Uh, and so, yeah, yeah, don't judge, don't judge your experience. And my second experience is with an abortion, and I was 22, and I consider this story very unique. So um, I got pregnant at 20 um, to my now husband, with my now husband, uh, and, uh, and we, we had a son, Aaron, uh, and he's 16 now, time flies. Uh, and, and when I got pregnant, um, the first thing on my mind was, I'm, I'm getting an abortion. I can't handle this. I'm not ready. And I was so scared and I came home and I told my husband, it was my boyfriend at the time. And he just was so happy, like ear to ear smiles, like all he's ever wanted to be was a dad. But I was depressed and angry for months about having a kiddo, but his energy and belief in me uh, as a mom really, uh, I don't know, gave me the love and light I needed to, to move forward with the pregnancy. And so I decided to keep Aaron. Uh, and I'm so glad I did. There was a lot of fear. Uh, I didn't have uh, a caring, supportive mom growing up. Uh, she was abusive in a lot of ways, uh, mentally unwell. So I, I think there was also that fear with inside me, like maybe I don't have the chops to, to be the mom that I'd like to be. Um, so I had Aaron. And uh, the second I met him, I fell in love with him fell in love with him and I thoroughly enjoyed being a mom, diapers and crying and breastfeeding and all. It just was second nature. I should add too, the second I found out I was pregnant with Aaron, I quit smoking, I took my prenatals, I was, I was an angel. <laughs> um, so fast forward a year, not even, maybe like eight or nine months after having Aaron, Ron and I, my husband, we get pregnant again. And 
it didn't feel right. Ron and I were having some big marital problems. There was some big trust and betrayal issues there. We were always fighting about finances. Uh, we didn't know if we were going to make it. Uh, and I was really scared about the health of the baby. I had gone back to smoking cigarettes again to try to lose the weight from Aaron. I was on uh, I don't know, like caffeine pills or like weight loss pills to speed up my metabolism, just junk. I was feeding myself junk. And I was like, I, I don't think we should have this baby. And in addition to that, Aaron was born with a lot of health problems. Uh, since, um, between the age of like one month and two years old, Aaron had to have three significant surgeries at Children's Hospital in Boston. And so uh, there was all sorts of fear and doubt and uh, and Ron and I made the decision out of love to, to have an abortion. And I share that because I, I feel like there's so much taboo out there. Well, we were married, right? Married people don't have abortions, right? Yes, yes they do. <laughs> we did the best we could at the time. Um, we didn't want there to be any additional health challenges with the kiddo, especially since I wasn't healthy. We had to trust kind of the, the vibes uh, of uh, our marriage and whatnot. Uh, and so we did. And having the abortion was really hard. Uh, the experience uh, of it, uh, you know, society shames you. I remember like the picketers outside. Uh, and my husband isn't as open or extroverted as me. So, you know, his philosophy was more like, let's move forward. Let's move forward. We don't need to sit in this moment or talk about it uh, as much. Uh, but I carried so much shame about that abortion for so, so long. Uh, and uh, a, a big part of that was thinking that it was more me than my husband. I tend to be a little bit more assertive. Uh, I, uh, I was definitely the one saying, I don't think this works. Uh, and over the years, my shame built because Ron and I ended up staying together and we ended up finding our way. And I ended up quitting smoking and getting healthy. And I, I think that's when the grieving hit a little harder for me too, not necessarily in that moment. In that moment, I feel like we we did the best we could uh, and we made the right decision. But years later, that that regret or that shame really trickled in. Well, what, what if we had stuck it out? Would we have a daughter, right? Would we have another son, right? And then add on that other you know, pregnancy, would I be a mom of three? Uh, and I, I never talked about the abortion. And that's one of the main reasons I'm here with you today. Uh, it's just to talk, right? It's just to talk about my lived experiences. Uh, and so whatever your experience is, maybe you have an experience with abortion and maybe it was just like Ron and I and it was made of love, or maybe it wasn't. Maybe, maybe it was out of uh, selfishness or, or fear or, or whatever your unique situation is, depending on, on what happened, that's okay too. Uh, there's no right way <laughs> to make a decision and, and we do the best we can in, in the moment. Uh, I'm going to share a, a story now with you from a client of mine a, a few months ago. Um, this woman, uh, I will call her Jane. Uh, and so Jane came to me um, for an hour reading, uh, nothing specific. She just wanted to kind of have like connections with her deceased loved ones in spirit. She wanted a little psychic messaging. And so we just chilled in the energy. And she has uh, three daughters and she's like, oh, well, how's my daughter, Kelly? How's my daughter, uh, you know, Brianna? You know, what are you feeling for them? I got some nice messages there. And as we're chatting, I'm like, oh, I, I, there's another kiddo here. Like, there's another energy that wants to talk to you. She's like, no, 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 I only have three kids. We just talked about them. Everything's good. And I'm like, no, I'm feeling a kiddo. I feel like you have another kid. And she looks at me. She goes pale white. And she was so shame-filled. And she just looked at me and she says, I had an abortion. I was like, oh goodness, honey, well, let's see. Let's see if this is your baby. And I was able to give her uh, a lot of evidence that yes, it was. And this, this beautiful woman, Jane, told me how much shame and sorrow and fear she had been holding because of her decision. And the baby, directly from the baby's mouth, said, tell my mom she made the right decision. 
the the male that she had gotten pregnant with was abusive and this is coming directly from the baby the baby saying it would have been a really bad marriage you would have gotten hurt it would have been traumatic for me uh and so i hope you carry that story too right like our loved ones um even if they didn't get to fully experience uh that 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 human side they're still connected to us just like our ancestors even though we might never have like met human to human our ancestors their energy is still with us and so whether it's a pregnancy loss an abortion uh you know the energy of them is is still with us too and again there's no right or wrong way if you want to lean into them and pray to them and build a beautiful connection with them please do and if you want to go about your work world and don't think about them often that's okay too like there's no right or wrong um i don't know the dates that that my that my babies didn't become uh i didn't keep track of uh any of those dates i don't do any yearly ritual things to honor them not that those things are bad but i'm just trying to like again debunk some things like you don't have to designate a full day to show your love or to show your your grief if that makes sense but i do i talk to them you know sometimes they'll just be like hey i feel you like i feel the energy kiddos like thank you uh and then there'll be weeks that go by that i don't so now let's shift thank you by the way i just want to pause on this beautiful energy thank you for listening to my stories i i hope they connect with you uh in one way or more but let's shift now because i i do want to put on my psychic medium hat again and, and my spiritual teaching hat again and i really want to help you understand my belief system in hopes that you'll take what feels right to you and maybe expand upon how you understand the other side so uh i'm gonna first tackle like why wouldn't a baby decide to fully come right why would something like a miscarriage happen right like on the surface that just feels so so terrible right like why would they break my heart why wouldn't they come is it my fault did i do something no 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 I believe in free will. Uh, I believe my soul as a human has free will. And I believe our spirits, um, such as our unborn babies who are gonna come in, have free will. And that's one of the beautiful things about being us is we can make decisions. Uh, and, and that's a spiritual connection to our God, to our universe is to be uniquely us. So we have free will. We can decide this pregnancy doesn't feel great or or a kiddo can decide, you know what, I can see into the future something shifted and I don't think it's the right time for me to come. I think I'm going to be able to help mom better if I stay in heaven or you know what, I think um, I'm going to cause more trauma if I come because I'm seeing ahead of time that a year from now there's going to be a bad accident or there's going to be more physical health challenges. So there's so many things that they're aware of uh, or I know it's really hard to understand but we might have agreed upon some kind of a hard grieving experience for our soul's journey. Maybe it was always a part of the plan out of love and light and learning that we do get pregnant, but we never fully get to, to hold or experience our, our human baby that way. Maybe that was agreed upon because it's gonna open us up to the other side and get us more curious and receptive to the spirit world. Or maybe there was some sort uh, of a lesson that we we really wanted to deep dive in. Um, so it doesn't come from um, a, a, a bad place, but there's so many unknowns there. But free will is something. And although we come here, my belief anyways, with what I call a soul contract, before we come here, we agree on some basic terms with ourselves and others uh, that are in our life about, hey, these are the things I'm coming to earth for. I want to learn this. This. I want to experience this. I want to do this. Here's how you can help me. Uh, and some of them are helping to lift us up. And some of us are try, uh, trying to push us down all in an effort out of love and light. So free will is big. 
big, big, big. And if you think about it and you understand free will from a place of love, it won't feel as much of a punishment if for whatever reason your baby decides not to come or you decide it wasn't the right time for your baby to come, okay? So free will. And so that soul contract, um, what I believe is we, we create that soul contract, um, but because of free will, it's always changing. Like it's not static, right? If I want to touch my nose now, I'm going to touch my nose, right? There's nowhere in the contract that says during the show, Danielle doesn't touch her nose. Absolutely not. I do what I want. But the contract has some bigger things at play that if we're in flow, we're going to move towards it, right? We're going to move towards it. And that's why it's so important to be in flow and to be intuitively connected, right? But there might have been a soul contract um, where you could make the free will decision of having an abortion. Maybe it was already known to your soul that that was going to be a difficult decision that you needed to make. And don't get me wrong, although I'm adding all sorts of love and lightness to this conversation, by no means am I trying to soften it, right? These decisions, these, these passings away, these what could have been, they're, they're heartbreaking, they're, they're tragic, uh, traumatic. Uh, I don't want you to misunderstand the love I attach to all of these concepts, uh, to there not being pain. But, but what I want to differentiate today as it relates to the pregnancy losses and abortion is we can have pain without suffering. Yes, things hurt, but we don't have to hurt ourselves even more. And if we lean into our spirituality and better understand some of these concepts, we can understand there's a bigger picture. For an example, I firmly believe um, my two babies that are up in heaven, uh, they're with me now, but I, I, there wasn't uh, anything that was prevented. Maybe in this lifetime, they didn't come and experience me as a human mama, and I didn't experience them as human children, but I believe we're going to do it again. Uh, and so my belief system, spiritual-wise, um, spiritual is, uh, is re reincarnation. And if you're not familiar with that concept, uh, it's just that we come here again and again and again uh, in different bodies, in different forms for different reasons. And I believe that although um, with an abortion, for an example, although I might have terminated the possibility of that very specific human experience, I didn't terminate a soul <laughs> and neither did you. <laughs> They're alive and well. I need to say that again. That is so important. Really just want you to feel that in your heart, maybe even take the time to Give yourself a little hug right now. Like you did, you did not terminate a soul. <laughs> Maybe you terminated an experience for this lifetime. And that's okay. You have free will. God gave us free will. Uh, and there's going to be other opportunities for you to connect when you go back in heaven and when you come and do this rodeo again. So that's really, really important for you to lean into if you haven't considered reincarnation. And so if you become familiar with all of these concepts and you understand how karma works, it can also be easier to understand why some of these hard things happen. Now, what karma is, my belief, my understanding from working with the spirit world uh, is, uh, again, it's nothing deep and dark. Sometimes you hear like, well, karma is a beep, right? And yes, sometimes it can be, but uh, it's more beautiful than that. It's just a balancing of energies. It's just a balancing of energies. So for an example, maybe in a past life, uh, maybe you were rotten to someone. We'll say maybe your little brother, right? In a past life, you were rotten to your little brother right? Well, maybe in this life, they get to be the older brother and they, they get to be a little rotten to you, right? To balance the karma, if you will, the yin, the yang, the night and the day, right? Everything uh, that we experience here has some duality. 
And so karma is such a big concept. If it interests you, I encourage you again to lean into it and study more. Uh, but when you're thinking about well, why do these bad things happen or, you know, why did I maybe make something bad happen? Uh, it might just be a rebalancing of karma. I don't believe that anything is right or wrong. Uh, and I believe we always have the opportunity to rebalance karma, whether it's in a different life or even this life. So if you are holding on to any guilt or shame, don't wait till the next lifetime. Work through it. The more you work through your karmas now, the easier it'll be for your next lifetime. There won't be as much hard work to do. You can enjoy the experience. And it's my belief system that once we get our karmas balanced, we have a little bit more flexibility on if we decide to come back to earth or not. Maybe we've done enough rodeos here and our karma is balanced and satisfied. And we've got a lot of learnings from here that we decide we don't need to come back. So really consider karma in, in all of this, but not from a fear-based place. It's not fear. It is all love. And so with that... We're just going to maybe close our eyes. It's a lot of information, a lot of emotion. I'm going to thank myself for showing up today, for being brave, for being vulnerable, for being true, for being light. I'm going to thank you. I'm going to thank you for being curious. I'm going to thank you for leaning into the hard stuff. I'm going to thank you for wanting to heal and grow. And this is beautiful. And let's just keep this energy. There are people like me out there. I know, I know the world feels scary. I know there's so much finger pointing and judgment, and it just makes us want to crawl under a rock and hide but don't <laughs> find find the light workers you're one two for showing up there's community you can stay connected to me and continue showing up for this show next week we have an amazing episode uh, this is going to be all about finding joy after multiple losses. I have a very special guest coming on. Her name is Vicki. Uh, Vicki's a spiritual teacher herself. She's a Reiki master, uh, and she has experienced it. Her husband died by suicide. Her son died by suicide. And her daughter died by cancer. And when I tell you that Vicki is a light being, uh, of course, she hurts. Of course, there's so much work within her that's been done and that needs to keep going. But whew, she doesn't carry it. She finds joy even after all those tremendous losses. She can shoot the shit. <laughs> she can continue her light work. And I'm going to have the chance to interview her for, for me and for you to continue to give you that added boost, that love and light and perspective on how can we experience the hard things and still enjoy this crazy and wild thing we call life. So that's next Friday. We always meet Dr. Danielle, onwards with Dr. Danielle. We always meet Fridays, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Pacific. You can go to my website, drdaniellclark.com. You might want to sign up for my blog too, now that I'm thinking of it. I'll send you affirmations and writing prompts and any events. So, so get on that. But the link to our show every Friday, you just go to onwards and then you click it uh, and then poof will be there. And I'm so excited to, to share Vicki with you. All right. So I am going to end this live recording now. Uh, I invite anyone who would like to stay on, feel free to have an open chat with me. All right. Be well, friends. Bye.